So apparently trans people and trans allies are absolutely outraged at something that Adele said that some perceive to be transphobic. So what exactly did she say and who's mad? Well, first and foremost, we'll get to the headlines. Uh, but she accepted an award at the Brit Awards called Artist of the Year. Now, this award was uh, previously two distinct categories, one for Male Artist of the Year and another for Female Artist of the Year. And upon winning and accepting this award in her speech, she said the following, I understand why the name of this award has changed, but I really love being a woman and being a female artist. I do. I'm really, really proud of this. I really, really am. So, um, apparently, that specific comment sparked backlash. So, let's look at some of these headlines here. Newsweek reports, Adele's I Love Being a Woman Brit Awards speech sparks transphobia debate. Page 6 says, Adele slammed for telling gender-neutral award show she loves being a woman. Apparently, the Brit Awards is a gender-neutral award show. The New York Post says, good on Adele for celebrating female, not gender-neutral achievement. Now, uh, there's more headlines. These were all shared by Ari Drennan on Twitter, so credit to her for this. Now, given how many articles were written about the outrage over Adele's comments, you'd think that there were thousands and thousands and thousands of people who were outraged about that comment, right? So how many people overall were actually mad at what Adele had to say? The number may surprise you based on how many news outlets cover this. So I took a look at Newsweek's article about this. And finally, when we reach paragraph seven and eight, that's when they finally provide us with a total of two examples. Two examples. So one person said, please, no, Adele can't be a turf. Now, when you click on the link, um, I was expecting this to take me to that tweet so I could see how much engagement this had, whether or not it blew up, how many thousands of likes it had. But it literally just links to Newsweek's Twitter news page, which isn't very helpful. But then we get to the uh, last two comments here. So one person said that last comment, though ambiguous, could be perceived as turfy. Please know. And perhaps the harshest here, who'd have thought Adele was a transphobe and would use her platform to call for the destruction of the trans community, especially the confused teenagers? Now, you might think that that's actually three different comments, but this came from two different people in total. But it's a little bit irritating because they don't link the tweets or even screenshot them, so we don't know how much engagement these two tweets had. And we need to know how many people are liking and sharing these tweets so we can determine just how severe the backlash was. So I did a little bit of digging, and after conducting a thorough investigation, it turns out that the first comment received a whopping total of, wait for it, five likes. Five likes, folks. Five likes. But just you wait, because if you think that that is outrageous, when we go to the second comment cited in the article about Adele, that one received a total of 16 likes. So, these critiques of Adele, I mean, they've really blown up, folks. The backlash is so severe, so loud. I don't know how she'll ever recover from this. Now, in page six's article, they cite the same two comments that were made in the Newsweek article, but they say that the Times of London said that someone else said that they lost a lot of respect for Adele and would no longer spend a cent on her music. Now, when you click on that link that they provide you with, that quote is nowhere to be found in the article. So we're still at a maximum of two different people, two tweets with very low engagement. But when you go to the New York Post's coverage of this huge controversy, they refer to the same turf tweet that got five likes, mind you. Uh, but at least they were later fair enough to admit that some people did come to her defense over this made-up controversy after saying that she got, quote, all the crap she got on Twitter, implying that there's thousands of people who are just so mad at Adele. So two different, very small Twitter accounts with a combined total of 21 likes. That specifically is what warranted multiple outlets making a story about this. Now to put this into perspective for you, I decided to tweet out the word fart with no context. And that tweet got more likes and retweets than both of the aforementioned Adele outrage tweets combined in less than 15 minutes, thus making it far more newsworthy than the supposed outrage over Adele's comments. So by their own standards for what they deem newsworthy, it seems like they should be writing an article about my fart tweet, no? Hey Newsweek, where's the article? Page six, aren't you gonna talk about this fart tweet? 
It got more engagement than the thing that you wrote an article about, but yet that's apparently worthy of an entire news cycle. Does anyone kind of understand what's happening here? This is a manufactured controversy, all being driven to demonize trans people and make it seem as if they're completely unreasonable. Now, I wasn't alone, and thankfully, Ari Drennan couldn't find anything as well. She said, I spent way too much of my morning trying to find a single trans person on the internet who was upset about Adele saying that she loves being a woman. I could not. This story is 100% manufactured outrage by a right-wing media fixated on turning the public against trans people. And she adds, as a trans person, I also very much love being a woman, and I'm glad that Adele feels the same. Whether you're a man, a woman, or non binary it's good to love yourself and the life you've made yeah so just two randos tweeted angrily at adele they were subsequently dogpiled by their followers but yet yeah, that is tantamount to massive backlash and controversy and a scandal according to these news outlets and all of them cited basically the same two examples if it's out there i haven't seen it but they could provide us with evidence. I mean, they're the ones writing the headlines, so they could provide us with some additional examples, but they're all pointing to the same two small accounts who got 21 total likes. Do you see what's happening? I mean, this is all a manufactured news cycle to demonize trans people, and predictably, anti-trans propagandists in corporate media jumped on this story as well because they thought this was another opportunity to prove to their viewers how unreasonable trans people are. Take a look. Adele now echoing a similar message at the Brit Awards, becoming the woke folks' next target. Uh-oh. She's accused of transphobia by declaring she loves being a woman at the gender-neutral award show Tuesday. Adele made the remark while accepting an Artist of the Year award. That category merges the old Best Female and Best Male awards. People on social media were outraged, some calling her a trans-exclusionary radical feminist. So Adele did this, I mean, I don't even know what you, what you would call it. They were calling it gender neutral, some gender neutral thing. And she talked about how much she loved being a woman. And they, they were mad at her. That's very offensive. They slammed her. She was slammed for telling a gender neutral award show that she loves being a woman. Like, <laughs> you can't love being a woman. It's horrible. You, you have to be gender neutral. Like us. Be like us. We're so tolerant. <laughs> I'm I'm appalled. She loves being a woman. That's, that's, that's so outrageous. intolerant. Yeah, really. She should be tolerant and just be like them only, Ugh, and Jesus. only think like them. All the the they them people. She should only be like them. Adele sparking serious backlash after that comment. She won the Brit Awards newly created Artist of the Year Award. It merges male and female categories and creates one top gender neutral prize. Now the critics are lobbing attacks to the musician for saying that she's proud to be a woman. Some people have uh, have her back, including Maureen Callahan of the New York Post, who's with us now. Nice to see you, Maureen. It's Hi. been some time. Here's your quote. Adele's a grown woman singing about her experiences as a woman. Why should she be expected to fuse or deny what essentially is her superpower? End quote. Not a lot of disagreement. What's going on here? You know, I think we're in a real state of, of overcorrection uh, as a society at large. But I do think what's fascinating is we're seeing that you really have to be sort of a bulletproof brand, an institution like an Adele, like a Chappelle, to even begin to sort of puncture a little air into this, this sort of uh, liberal orthodoxy. Serious backlash. She got serious backlash. Serious backlash. Keep in mind the serious backlash he's referring to two very small accounts on Twitter. And I love how this is being referred to as a gender neutral award show, as if she's walking into the lion's den and she's, you know, uh, declaring, I'm proud to be a woman, not gender neutral. That's not what's, what's happening. This is the Brit award show and the category itself is gender neutral. I just, <laughs> these people are so ridiculous. They're so thirsty to find some reason to jump on this anti-trans bandwagon that they'll fall for a completely fabricated story made up because two people were outraged at Adele, two randos on the internet. There's a lot more hot takes you can find on Twitter if you choose to look for it, but we don't see articles written there.
about the other hot takes, uh, you know, but these people have an agenda. They like these types of stories. They like to talk about uh, outrage. Outrage over trans outrage is really what gets them views and clicks because anti-trans hysteria is incredibly popular right now. So they profit off of that sentiment. They get views and clicks, and that's why they do it. But these people are... Uh, they're idiots. They're gullible. I could probably create a fake Twitter account and fucking dupe them into thinking that um, there's outrage over Shania Twain's 1990 song, I Feel Like a Woman. Like, I could create a brand new account, uh, talk about how Shania Twain is a turf and she's transphobic, log into my other Humanist Report account like that one, and because it got one like, therefore, that is... Uh, that, that, that's tantamount to backlash by their own fucking standards. I mean, these people are just so insufferable, looking for any fucking reason to demonize trans people. Shame on them. Shame on all of them. And it's funny because all they do is look at the headline. Like Joe Rogan, he just looked at the headline. And then he reacts to the supposed outrage by being outraged himself. Why don't we actually dive a little bit deeper from time to time, actually see how many people are outraged, ask questions about the motivations of people writing these articles in media. Perhaps they're trying to farm clicks. Perhaps they're trying to get appearances on Fox News so they can promote these articles that they know will do well with Fox News' right-wing audience. Can we just not do better? Can we maybe not be as willing as we are currently to jump on this bandwagon and attack an entire marginalized community and make it seem as if they're incredibly, you know, unreasonable and uncompromising as their community is getting attacked? I mean, this is just so ridiculous, but this is what you would expect in the age of social media and corporate media, where the people who are creating these stories don't actually care about news or facts or data. They just care about clicks and they just care about demonizing people who they view as other. So they already view like Joe Rogan, for example, he already thinks that trans people are so unreasonable, so weird. So, you know, it's not that hard uh, of a leap logically to make to assume that, of course, they'd be outraged over something that Adele said, this benign statement that nobody cares about. Of course, they'd be outraged about that. It's just, it's ridiculous. So, I mean, this really goes to show you that fucking manufactured outrage is popular because it sells and people fall for it every fucking time. Because they want to believe what they want to believe. And so if they find a source that's going to confirm their existing biases about a particular community, they're going to jump on that bandwagon. And that's really, really unfortunate. I'm going to come. Do not come. 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 Come.